gonna finally get around to doing a video on this gigantic uh, blue coat proxy SG810. This is a gigantic network appliance that's used for doing all sorts of stuff like content filtering, proxy servers, all sorts of stuff. It does web scanning. It's one of those gigantic all-in-one appliances. Uh, this is, I believe, their largest model. Uh, it has a little LCD on it. I believe this is a Dell design, just based on the little LCD and stuff. I think this is a Dell product. Uh, it's got a nice little LCD on it with controls. It has four hard drives. Uh, unfortunately, this one didn't come with any drives installed, uh, which isn't the end of the world considering they're um, SCSI hard drives, which aren't exactly common. And uh, like most uh, blue coat stuff, uh, there is a custom motherboard inside, and it's kind of useless. Around back, there's a standard uh, power supply. Well, it's somewhat standard because it's got two fans in it, which is a little odd. Uh, we've got two USB ports, a serial port, uh, two Ethernet ports. I don't think these are gigabit. I think they might be just 100 base T. Oh, no, sorry. They are uh, gigabit, as are the uh, two ports on this card, which is a bypass card with relays. And, uh, yeah, not much on the back. It's definitely not a regular PC. There's no um, standard array of connectors. So I'm going to get this gigantic cover off. And we'll take a look inside, which I know is very dirty. All right, on the inside we have the power supply, which is a 500 watt kind of beast. Uh, two sticks of RAM are installed out of a possible eight. This is... PC3200, uh, 1 gig, these are ECC memory sticks, which isn't terrible. Um, this particular model has two uh, processors installed. Now, I know for a fact that these are um, user upgradable, which is a little odd for um, network appliances. Usually they aren't uh, user upgradable because they want to sell you a ridiculously expensive warranty plan and upgrade packages and all that crap. There are two cards installed. Uh, one is a secure socket layer accelerator uh, for encryption, and the other one is the uh, aforementioned uh, Ethernet card. Uh, the motherboard has SCSI. I believe it's an onboard Adaptech controller. Uh, the board itself appears to be somewhat standard ATX sized, but I don't think it's an ATX board in any real sense of the term. Uh, there's no onboard video, um, the layout's a little funky, so, yeah, I don't think, I don't think it'll work in a regular PC case. Uh, you've got, uh, standard parallel ATA, ATA, there's also, I believe this is either a second channel or for a disc on module, which uses a slightly different pinout. There's also a teeny tiny two and a half inch style connector for, uh, hard drives and a parallel port connector. Actually, there might be a video connector in there somewhere. I'll have to take another look because there's also another wide connector here too, which might be it. And uh, yeah, not too much else. The, uh, the front has a second board covered by a huge shrouded thing. Break that off later. Uh, this is the three hot swap, or sorry, four hot swappable um, SCSI drives. And it's got like a little flex, flat flex cable running out to the front, and that's about it. It's not the most impressive uh, piece of hardware. On the front half, with the shroud removed, you can see the three gigantic blower fans. They're all made by Sanyo Denki. They're all gigantic, and they're all incredibly filthy. And uh, yeah, there's just a, a, a rather large control board for the four hot swappable uh, SCSI connectors, or drives. And there's a ribbon cable running off to the front LCD. And that's about it on the front. It's just got a small um, SCSI cable running from one end to the other, or one board to the other one. And uh, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to power it up first because I want to get the processors out and take a look at the motherboard and get this whole thing off my desk because it's so filthy. So let's see what happens when we power it on and connect it to maybe a serial port or even a VGA connector if I can find a uh, place to plug one in. 
I'm unable to uh, get it to say anything over serial. So I'm assuming either it doesn't work or it needs uh, files off the hard drives, which aren't installed, as I mentioned. Or maybe it's missing some memory because uh, it's a little odd that a dual processor system only has two sticks of RAM. Usually they're installed in pairs and usually you have two per processor. So it's a little odd that there's only one uh, set of them. However, there is one thing that's worth hearing and that is the amount of noise this thing makes. If you are wearing headphones or if you have your speakers turned up, turn them down now. Is it on yet? I am currently using my power meter, so I have no idea how much this thing uses. I would say probably in the 200 watt range, at least. Oh well, let's see what processors it's got. The two he copper heat sinks are quite nice. They're passive and heavy and, you know, pretty decent, albeit absolutely filthy. All right, I got the motherboard out. Uh, it's incredibly filthy. Uh, if it looks a little wet, it's because I sprayed alcohol all over it, uh, just to keep some of the dirt off. Um, so this is actually a tie-in uh, S5350 motherboard, uh, which is actually not a custom useless motherboard, kind of. I say kind of because right here is where the graphics chip should go. So obviously they ordered this without um, the RAGE, I think it's a RAGE XL, uh, yeah, RAGE XL uh, video card, or chip, I should say. Um, so yeah, you're kind of limited to a terminal. And since this thing uses so much power that it's absolutely insane, pretty useless, and this motherboard's not really worth the uh, effort of uh, buying the system for. Uh, a couple things I noticed when there's this huge axial uh, resistor, which is a little odd to see on a motherboard. It's got two 64-bit PCI slots. Uh, one had the bypass card. It has a little custom bracket on it, which is a little annoying. It's loaded with relays so that if the power goes out, it can s short these two Ethernet ports together and drop this out of the network. Uh, the board itself is made by Silicon Limited. I've never really heard of them. It's probably an Intel controller. Hang on. Let me fight this thing. Yep, just an Intel controller, nothing too special. Uh, pretty useless board, I'll probably just take the relays off it. Up next is the Nitrox XL NMB Accelerator Board. Uh, this is missing a bracket, which is a little annoying, that's just how it comes. It has a Nitrox uh, SSL decryption processor, and that's about it, just some power circuitry. Nothing too interesting. Here's the uh, SCSI card. It's actually installed in a mini PCI slot. So I think I'm gonna take this out and see if it'll operate in another board. That would be kind of useful because I don't really have any SCSI uh, controllers. So this would be kind of cool, uh, especially if it works on anything. Uh, this is the M7970. It looks like it's just a basic uh, controller card, nothing too special on it. As you can tell by the kind of rushed video, uh, this thing's not too interesting. I'm not even going to bother going into the rest of the, the whole SCSI board and stuff. It's just too dirty, not too interesting. It's just decoupling and crap for the... Um, this thing uses too much power, no video, no serial ATA. It's just not worth it. Even though you can get these things fairly cheap, they're not worth it. The only thing I can think of this would be useful for is if you really need to save money on hard drives. Uh, if you really needed to save money, you could buy one of these for cheap and use four SCSI hard drives, which are generally fairly cheap on eBay. Uh, usually they're much cheaper than a serial ATA or a uh, serial attached SCSI. Other than that, I mean, 
even then you're not going to really save any money because you're going to use so much power running this thing that you'll just pay through the nose for electricity. So it's all pretty pointless. Uh, I would not recommend picking one of these up. Uh, by the way, the uh, two onboard Gigabit Ethernet controllers are Broadcom, which is a little unusual on a PC motherboard. Uh, Apple tends to use Broadcom quite a bit though. Yeah, not much to say about it. Uh, I'm just going to rip out all the electronics and put all the plastic and metal in the recycling bin. Uh, the only thing I'll keep is maybe the SSL card because it's kind of neat and the uh, Ethernet card to just take the relays off and see if I can get any money for the copper scrap on the heat sinks. I don't know. It's pretty useless. I don't recommend buying it.